What's going on, Zoombots? Tony Scangili here with a little bit of a new take on his Spender series. Now, I used to do that for Marvel Strike Force, so why wouldn't I do it here? I'm basically going to review a couple of the cash stores and let you know what I think the value or the worth of these items are. Now, of course, remember the most important thing, value is something that you are told, worth is something that you believe. If you were told something costs $20, but you don't think $20 is gonna give you the value that they tell you it is, then it's not worth it. That's kind of the short. So let's take a quick look at the first thing and the most common question, gems, the in-game currency. Are they worth it? Well, the first time bonuses you get are incredibly generous to say the least in that you will get way more, but I've already gone through and bought those so you don't have to worry about it. Let's just look at what the actual values are and, and get an idea of what you're gonna get for it. Now, $2 is 240 gems, USD, of course. Uh, so that's a good amount. If you really think about what gems are worth, it costs you about 150 to reset your you know, villains and hero campaign energy three times a day, that's before it starts reaching 100, uh, or it's two refreshes of the grand campaign, so two bucks to get two to three or so refreshes, not bad, not terrible. Uh, as far as what you can buy with them, there's not many things that cost gems, uh, at least not all the time, sometimes there's an event, but you do get a decent amount of gems a day for free, you get a follow up a decent amount of gems if you are watching the uh, videos or if you are making small purchases for you know random things and you are getting a decent amount of gems from sorcerer's tournament so a dollar 99 for gems not a lot but totally worth two dollars which you'll notice is every time you make a purchase of gems you do get more gems than the amount of money you're spending in a one for one, you know, like $4.99 for $600. So each gem is worth less than a penny in US currency anyway. As you move up, you can kind of see the value goes up. So this is a little bit better than what, you know, $6 would get you here. This is a little bit better than what two of these offers would get you and it goes up and up and up. When you start looking at what the gems mean, you start getting a better understanding of, of how to buy them. So I think the value of gems are great, but considering the fact that right now the best use of gems at all in this game is refreshing energy and maybe even some nodes if you're really desperate to invest in a character, that, then the purchase value of gems really just comes down to how active you want to be in progressing. The value is good. In addition, you can even spend your gems here to buy influxes of gold or level up potions. Uh, I don't necessarily believe that these are the best uses of gems, but it's very nice to know that you can directly convert an amount of money into an amount of gold. So this is about $2 worth of gold with a little bit extra gems. This is roughly $5 worth of gold. And then right here, this is roughly uh, $10 worth of gold. So you can kind of see where gold is valued, and that's huge because that lets you know how much value you're getting, not only out of other offers, you know what I mean? Like if you see an offer that has 100,000 gold in it, you know that's worth about 100 gems in addition to whatever it is, and you know 100 gems is worth about 75 cents. I know it sounds crazy, but you can truly get a really good idea of what everything is worth. Uh, as for level up potions, I know you're going to be tempted to buy them. You shouldn't because you shouldn't be leveling every single character you get up. You should be working on one team at a time and then swapping to another team. So maybe you're working on your heroes team to progress in the heroes campaign. Once you've reached the cap at that where you can't go further until you level up, then you start building up your well, villains characters, repeat the process. It's kind of a nice little built in hopscotch that allows you to work on only four or five characters at a time without going crazy. And then once you've gotten past the point where you're worried about villains or heroes progression, maybe you're five or six levels away in the late 50s where it's really hard to gain uh, experience, then you could start keying in on key characters like the villains team or the kingdom team, or that's pretty much it. Those teams are great. You've seen my other videos. So I wouldn't worry too much about level up potions because in the early stages of the game, when you're going from level one to level 30, you're gonna be out of potions a lot because you're gonna be bringing up a whole bunch of characters. But as your characters start reaching levels 40 and 50, you're gonna realize that bringing them up 
is not as impactful as they need to be. So you're going to be uh, with a large portion of level up potions laying around. Uh, so that's that's it. Another thing to know is there are free gem offers. I'm not going to go into detail about tap joy offers. I feel like that's not my my goal. I have a love hate relationship with them. I love the idea that there are players who can play more. Uh, spend no money and get more gems. That's phenomenal. I don't necessarily like how tap joy does business, but I'll say I've done it before. I've gotten quite a few gems from it. So if you are interested in doing tap joy offers, maybe I'll make a separate video on how to find what tap joy offers are worth it. We'll see. Uh, going up into the next one is the chests. Now, these are all chests that you obtain. This is uh, every three days you obtain this, providing you complete all of your dailies, which you should. This is a 24 hour chest for none of these are stuff you can buy. Obviously, campaign chests are free and sometimes they throw them in on offers. Nothing really crazy. This right here, this is the a trap. I understand that some players may say, well, I'm going to open this and get a whole bunch of value. And yes, there are very few characters in the game right now. And if you look even further, there are very few characters in this chest probably only about 40 characters now you'll notice some names show up multiple times but in spite of all of that you have to remember it's still rng so you're still spending the equivalent of like 35 dollars or so to open 10 chests and get a random number of shards between let's be real 8 and 10. You're, uh, the first one on the 10 drop gives you 25 minimum, but let's be clear, that's not going to happen. You're going to get about eight. So if you really look at it, you're getting 10 chests. You're getting about eight random character shards per chest or a total of a 70, 75 to 100 total different character shards. That could be great for you, and that's good value. I don't really find value in that, and I purchased them in the beta, and I have a video on it that shows that it wasn't great even when it was 11 and 12 character shards. So it's great if you have extra money burning a hole in your wallet and just want to accelerate as fast as you can and throw as much money as you can at this. But ultimately, I don't think these are worth what they cost. So this is a whale slash kraken purchase only, where you just don't buy one and hope for the best. You buy a ton of them and don't worry about the best case because you're just going to keep buying until you get what you want anyway. Uh, and that goes the same with the 5X and the regular ultimate chest. Truly not necessarily worth it. Now, if they had an offer that was like $10 for an ultimate chest, totally worth buying then because the value is cut by a third almost and... At that point, you're spending $10 for almost 100 different character shards. I think it's worth it. Moving into the specialty items. Uh, now, I already bought the pass holder, so guess what? You should also buy the pass holder. That said, the pass holder has two different purchases. Unfortunately, I can't show you right now, but it does have a $10 option and a $25 option. Usually, the $10 option is just access to the pass holder. The $25, I believe, has an ultimate chest in it as well as some number of gems, and it gives you a handful of pass holder energy. I'm going to say this now so no one ever forgets it. You will 100% complete the pass holder event in about four days. That's it, this is what's gonna happen. By playing the game, no money spent, you will take about four days to get all 50 ranks of the pass holder. You can buy the pass holder event at any time you want. That said, since the pass holder event, which I will show you now, does tend to tie in with the current event going on and at least give you unlock characters. The earlier you buy it, the longer you're gonna have to invest in those characters, the more you can use those characters in the event, etc., etc. So it is incentivized to purchase this whenever you uh, can. That said, if you'll notice, I'm pretty much over halfway done. I bought this pass holder a day ago maybe and i'm no fear of being able to complete this the second it comes up now i didn't mind getting the extra gold it's basically the uh the welfare gold system uh, and it gives you a decent amount of other items i do think it's worth it especially if the event going on is something that you care about uh, one of the best value purchases you can get in this game but uh, a criticism of it is that it is 
it ends too soon. I don't care that tier 50 is the top uh, or how quickly it gets to tier 50. I care that when I'm one week into the pass holder event, uh, I've already completed the pass holder event and then all progress is dead. I would like to see another 50 tiers added with additional stuff. So let me clarify, I don't want this to be harder. I want this as it is and then 50 more things with more gold, with more gems, with more potions as it progresses. That's what I would like to see or more pass holders. Maybe um, a pass holder lasts about two weeks or so because that's how long it takes to complete a pass holder anyway or less. You know, honestly, it takes like three days. So that's as far as the pass holder goes. I think it's worth the investment, but not absolutely totally necessary the next purchase is the vip this is incredibly important to note you can buy the vip card multiple times it won't give you multiple vips but it will give you multiple gem payouts so this is a ten dollar purchase and more than adequate to unlock vip which we'll get into it gives you 500 gems the second you purchase it and then 30 days of 50 gems not bad it gives you a nice little gem income that you might not have been expecting, which can help you progress early game. The same thing goes here. It's just more gems. Uh, also, you can purchase these multiple times. So if you purchase the $24.99 gem offer uh, twice, you will get 2000 gems immediately and then you will get 300 gems a day, which is clearly better. Now, I don't know what your wallet looks like, so I'm not going to tell you which is the best purchase to make, but I will tell you how it works and you can decide for yourself let's talk about what vip does vip increases the basic daily things you can do and how quickly you can do them none of the individual things in the vip are absolutely worth any of the money but together the synergy like what they all give you is totally worth 10 bucks let's talk about it real quick first of all you get your daily gems duh we already talked about that second your challenges have no cooldown timer does that matter? No, of course not. But the fact that you can immediately do all your challenges as opposed to having to wait 10, 20, 30 minutes to complete each one, time saving. That's what you pay for, right? You pay money to skip time. So does what it's supposed to. It gives you 10 extra energy per refresh. It goes from 120 to 130. Whatever, right? I guess every day that means you'll get, if you refresh three times a day, which most people will, uh, you'll get an extra 30 energy it adds up over time but eh, you know so that's fine daily login claims big deal you get double whatever the daily logins are so if you see one that gives you character shards that's two does it matter eh, kind of if you get gold it gives you double two thousand to four thousand all of these things add up so that's a huge boost elite note attempts goes from three to four does it seem like much? No. Will you notice it over the course of a month? Absolutely. And the same thing with club dungeon attempts, getting an extra club dungeon attempt will help you progress further, which will get you to level 20 faster. Tiny little like paper cuts of value that accrue over time and really turn into good stuff. Then the next stuff is one touch complete all challenges time saving exclusive VIP exchange access and one touch purchase all the VIP exchange access you know, sometimes you could buy character shards. It's all gem related, so it's all just whaley whale stuff. But if you're a whale, buy it. What are you, insane? It's crazy value. And you can also buy costumes in there. Costumes are completely cosmetic, so it doesn't make too much of a difference to me. Uh, one touch purchase all. If you're already a whale, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that thing's great. It doesn't happen all the time. You don't need it all the time, but uh, it's a nice little cool feature. I wouldn't say it's worth anything, but just to get it for free is fine. One touch simulate tower mode only works in the final tower. Honestly, you are never, ever going to experience the situation where you need this uh, in the early game. By the time you can complete the final tower, uh, you're going to want to have the ability to auto sim the final tower. But by the time you can complete it, you can already beat it. So again, it's just a time saving technique. It doesn't help you defeat the tower. It just helps you after you've defeated the tower. Uh, 3x battle play speed, almost worth it on its own because I don't want to play uh, this game slowly. I want to play it as quickly as possible. That's why I hate other game modes that don't have uh, speed on it, but it is what it is. And additional save team slots and bonus daily quest rewards. 
uh, I think that goes without saying. You get almost double the daily quest rewards, which is huge, and you get five extra save team slots. Are the five extra save team slots worth it? Probably not for a really long time because you don't have five teams. You won't have five teams. It's kind of crazy to even build five teams in this game right now. I could think of three. Downtown Villains, Kingdom, Princesses, and I guess Toy Story, if you kind of count it. But it's not hard to... Like you get five save teams, that's pretty okay. You don't really need to worry about them early game. As you progress, you'll find that maybe you want to save a sixth or seventh team for something, or maybe you want to save alternate versions of teams, and then the extra save slots are worth it. But the bonus daily request rewards, absolutely. So as far as purchasing goes, the VIP and the pass holder, uh, you can spend a total of $20 a month to get both. If that's all of your, if you're only willing to spend about $20 a month, that would be the two things I purchase. If you want to spend less, I would definitely buy the VIP over the pass holder, but they both have pretty good merit. Then moving on to event specifics. Now, I don't ever think these are worth the gems. Um, that said, if they are, if you are a huge fan of Onward, the movie that hasn't come out yet, then at least this gives you an opportunity to work specifically towards a character as opposed to dirtling around and if you save gems you may be able to make purchase and get lucky i don't think these are necessarily worth investing in but compared to the ultimate chests i think these are way better because you get to single target farm the character uh, and then obviously the same thing kind of goes with milan and shan yu you kind of got to evaluate what you think the gems are worth and determine if you think a minimum of 10 Shan Yu shards don't look at the 330 never look at that that's great that it's an option but you're not going to get it Look at the lowest you can get and determine if this is worth what the lowest you can get is. Is 1,500 gems worth two days of farming Shan Yu shards out of the store or two Shan Yu purchases? I don't think so. Maybe a thousand, but nothing else. You're basically paying the tax for the chance that's never going to happen or very unlikely going to happen. Mulan, a little bit better value. The most important thing to note about Mulan is she's currently unfarmable in the game. So this value of the pack, even though it's forced artificial scarcity, is pretty good. Uh, and then these, these chests tend to have some kind of purchase available. Whatever. I No real notes, you know. I, I wouldn't mind buying them, I just don't really worry, especially about stuff I'm going to accrue for free. If you are a casual spender, I would avoid these, they don't really help you too much unless uh, you're looking to do a specific unlock, but if you are a whale, uh, these are totally worth buying. I don't think that if you are a free to play player or someone who only spends very infrequently like a guppy playable, a dolphin guppy kind of rule, uh, I don't think these are worth the purchase they're not going to incentivize you to make the purchase because they don't give you enough to justify the cost uh, last but not least we have the specific offer section i will give you just a general overview of what i think i think that any offer that costs five or ten dollars is worth considering especially because this right here will immediately two star uh, the character unlock as will him it's a two star character unlock which will definitely help you uh, as for this bundle I get it, I do, and look at all it gives you. Not only does it give you four star versions of each character, it gives you five of the uh, campaign, um, five of the loyalty packs, it gives you a thousand gems, which we've already figured out how much is worth. It gives you 10 of the packages that you can buy and a decent chunk of random materials. Is this worth $70? Uh, yes. Should you spend $70 on three characters in a mobile game? No. You know, like, eh, I don't think it's not worth it, but like you get good value. But again, not many people have the ability to spend $70 in one shot. Perhaps if this offer was broken into uh, three $20 offers, it would be better. But of course, since Manticore is a special unlock character, Everyone would just buy the Manticore one and probably skip over these two characters. Same kind of thing goes with the Milan bundle. Uh, you see 25 shards is a two star unlock of a character. This one's worth a little bit more. Why? I don't know. Uh, do you get more for it? No, it appears to be you get roughly the same. Barley gives you a two star unlock, the uh, loyalty chest, 100 gems, gold, and one purchase of the orb because they cost 10,000. Milan's only cost five. 
They look the same, so why is this offer $5 more expensive? I don't know. Do you like Milan? I do, but I didn't buy it, so it's up to you. As for Sean Yu, great character, totally worth it, doesn't matter. Don't look at it as what you get and what you pay. Look at it as what you save time. You farm him. This is roughly 10 days of farming Sean Yu in the, in the uh, exchange store. So you're spending $25 to get 10 days worth of progress on a character that is a very good character and probably the best farm in that store for a new player. So this will save you time. If you only made one purchase this month in the game and you skipped pass holder and VIP and got this instead, trust me, you would not regret it. Welcome booster. I am $20 is my impulse buy cutoff. So if I see $20, I want to make sure I'm getting good value. I've already said I don't think ultimate chests are worth any money. Getting a decent number of pass holder XP, this is not worth anything. It, it's free. These are okay. 500 gems. You know, it seems like they just kind of threw a whole bunch of stuff in. Ability runes and beta ability runes. Yes, early game, these will help, but eventually you'll reach a point like level 40 to 50 where you have an infinite supply of them because you can progress as far as you want so yeah i guess this offer is worth it in all of the little things but nothing individually makes me feel like this offer is a good deal just that it is uh kind of like a bundle package like if you took uh, the difference between buying peppers for uh, a stir fry and buying a pack that has peppers onions and, and tomatoes in it already where you could just go well they cost the same but this one is convenient because i'd have to make multiple purchases that kind of thing anyway uh, comment below and let me know what you think about spending obviously some people like to be free to play some people ch don't have a choice to be free to play some people are big blubbery whales like me and spend as much money as they want all the time always on random stuff that isn't worth it i do my best to spend the money and let you know what i think was worth it or not because it's what i like to do Comment below, let me know what you think about spending or about the kind of spending in the game, whether you think it's worth it. And uh, have a great night. Have a good day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I'll catch you later.